does tipping actually work? Do you guys find that in your restaurants, your staffs are motivated by tipping? Do you find it's a good model for you? Where do you stand on tipping, though it may not ever go away here in the US? Well, the, the reason that the tipping model, I mean, I, I know other countries do use different models, but what you'll find is that uh, the cost for, the extra cost for that employee will be in the cost of the food, the cost of the drink, um, versus the way it is set up now where it is it is something for the consumer to tip on, be it the percentage that they choose, and even though there are kind of like set percentages that are acceptable, yeah. especially here in New York City, um, I, I think it's, I think it, I think it works very well to make sure that your staff is giving the guests the best service, as they should be no matter what, really. But if, let's be honest, these people are trying to make um, money doing this job, being hospitable, but at the same time, trying to make money to support themselves, their families, and their other career opportunities that they have. So I think it works incredibly well. I'm the kind of person, like, unless it's like so horrible, like I'm just always gonna tip 20%. Like, do you find that most, or if it's like really amazing, I'll tip more, but like 90% of the time it's down the middle. Do you find that a lot of diners, it's like, you're the kind of person who tips X and that's what it's gonna be anyway? Does I, it motivate? I employees? think there are certain certain guests who are not good tippers and they yeah. just, I mean, especially for my father's generation, they, they're just like, no, it's 15% and not the tax included. And, like, right. and I'm like, why are you doing all this math? Just tip 20% right. and that's it. Um, but I think, I think, you know, tips definitely motivate your servers to do a better job. I've noticed on nights where we're slower, um, it's just every, everyone is just like kind of dragging. Um, and on nights, obviously when it's busier, people are moving faster, but like I feel like the, the servers are, are excited because they know they're gonna make a X amount of dollars or whatever because it's busier that night. And then I see them just like running around and really hustling. Um, and it's, you know, because it's, it's great for them when, when they are busy and when, when they're slow, they know that they're not going to make as much money. So um, um, it shouldn't be that way. They should always be hustling and <laughs> right. they should always be trying their best to give the best service that they can. But unfortunately, sometimes that's not the case. Um, and I think, you know, if we were to do away with tips and the, the, the business would have to absorb the costs of paying, you know, the servers a, a certain amount of money, um, not minimum wage or whatever it is now. Um, you know, it would it would increase the pricing like all around um, across the board, and then you know diners would be like, why why am I paying this much more money? The thing that's great about about the tip structure is you, it's almost like you're enabling your 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 waiter to be a, a small business owner. Like each one of their tables is like a little business that they own, mm -hmm. and they have to make sure they're looking after that guest, and they they're they're obviously incentivized to try and bring the sales of that table up um, because in the end it means a higher percentage in, in their tips. So I think as a business owner and I mean for somebody who worked for tips my entire life, I mean I started off as a you know a bus boy when I was 15 and worked in the front of the house primarily my entire my entire career. Um, I, I saw a great opportunity. It allowed me to put myself through college, you know what I mean? I was I was able to, to move to New York City and you know live in a crappy apartment in Brooklyn <laughs> but you know what I mean like that that was a job that you know you, you you have such a leg up on people starting in other careers where they start you know at a much lower lower uh, um, income so I, but as a restaurateur I think it's a good model because if you have to I mean you have so many guests in your in your restaurant at one time it's not like you, you own like a, a boutique where you're selling I don't know necklaces where one person comes in and it's usually one person in one-on-one -on -one experience where you own in that business and you make this product and you can interact with them when you have a restaurant you have like you know a ton of people all at once and then you rely on all these other little people that are underneath you or not little people but these uh, the, this the extension of yourself which are the which is the wait staff and you put your energy in training them and um, creating a culture in your restaurant which we try to, cr try to create a culture here that's fun and friendly and you know an extension of me and Brandon and Richard like like the personalities of who we are we try to inspire our staff to carry that through to our guests and you know again like on the sales side for a re restaurant owner it, you know you you give your staff a reason to continue to try and increase the sales of the of the restaurant which helps keep the lights on which helps pay all the other employees and it's you know we, we are a business, like, yeah, it, you do it at home, 
but it's, you're not at home. You're out. Right. You don't have to wash the dishes afterwards. You know what I mean? There's plenty of stuff you don't have to do when you go to a restaurant. And, and you know, it's it's that, that, that ability to, to give that person the opportunity to make money and control their own destiny a bit, I think is really an exciting aspect of what tipping is. And in, in the end, you know, the guests get to judge whether or not it was worth it. They, they don't have to tip 20%. Like, I think, and I think some people don't when the service is not good, you know. That, for me, that's a better way than going online and complaining anonymously about how bad your experience oh. is. Like, what about how bad your service was with your tip? Don't go online and trash talk uh, the restaurant or the server in front of, like, the whole world. It's, I don't think, I think that that's, that's a system that's broken, not, right. not, not, not the opposite. There's also a lot of times if you have a large party, yeah. you will say, okay, there's going to be an extra 20% added onto your bill. You know, how do you think that works by sometimes having mandatory? Bills? It works because it protects your staff mm -hmm. from large parties um, seeing a large bill and not wanting to do the correct thing and tip for all the work that was put into that. Um, so I 100% believe in uh, uh, 20% over, like for certain party sizes, yeah. especially when you have maybe like 10 people and they all split it on their credit cards and right. they and maybe they do something very confusing and then like somebody yeah. forgets like it just it also just makes it easier for them it's like it's been taken care of your large party like just sign on the line and you don't have to worry about it it's right. been you don't have care. to think or do math exactly yeah. which at the end of a nice meal with lots of wine yeah. and food and beer and cocktails maybe you really shouldn't be mm -hmm. so we are on board with shipping yeah. yeah we love it yeah. <laughs> thank you so much